Are you wishing that you could make more money at your job or in your business? Have you been feeling like it's not fair, the men are making more than I am? Then you're going to want to listen to this episode. Hello, lovely dynamic women, and welcome to the Dynamic Women Podcast. I am Diane Rolson, your host, and today we have the lovely Sophie Morick. Hi, Sophie. Hey, how are you? Good. I'm good. And I'm so excited because we get to talk about gender equity and getting paid what you deserve. I'm all about this topic. And I really appreciate that you are like basically dedicating your life to helping women make more money. It's awesome. Exactly. I'm passionate about it. it yeah, it sounds like it. And um, I want to let all our listeners know a little bit more about you first. So I'll, I'll roll through um, your bio. So, so Sophie Warwick, co-founder of The Thoughtful Co, specializes in developing in-house gender equity policies and chairing employee resource groups and advocacy groups. She uses her data analysis expertise from her engineering background to define targets and track growth and retention. In 2018, she co-founded Women in Consulting Engineering, or WCE, a nonprofit organization with over 500 members and monthly events to support and empower women in engineering. She co-founded The Thoughtful Co. so she could build more gender-inclusive workspaces and build rep representation of women at senior levels in all industries. So good. So good. And so today, this is why we're talking about gender equity and getting paid what you deserve. But I heard from you that you actually didn't really start with this in intention. It started organically as a passion project blog. I'd love to hear the story about that. Yeah, it's it's kind of a funny story. We didn't really set out to start a business and we didn't set out with something specific that we wanted to offer. Um, I, at the time before we started, was working as a structural engineer. So very male dominated industry, which was what really led to my passion around gender equity in the workplace. And so seeing so many women without opportunities for mentorship, peer support, and to move into senior positions. So I had this kind of bug in the back of my head that I wanted to do something in that space, but I wasn't sure what. And then in the meantime, my business partner, Jillian, was having some of those similar thoughts around women in the workplace. But through a different lens. She was working in executive compensation, so helping um, boards of directors pay their top executives. So that really, she was seeing that sometimes women weren't negotiating at really key points in their career and wanted to do something about it. So the two of us actually went out for dinner, we went for sushi and started talking about some of these things. She's an old friend of mine from when we were in university. And we'd shared this passion. So we decided we'll kick off by just writing articles about women at work and compensation. And then slowly it spiraled into what it is now really organically. And, you know, we saw this gap and there isn't a lot of services to support women in negotiating their compensation. And there isn't a lot of uh, companies that are offering gender equity coaching, especially in male dominated, more technical environments like engineering, construction and tech. So really wanting to help those employers build more inclusive workplaces as well. I love that you took something that was a little bit frustrating you and that you wanted to have a voice in and you moved from like a typical nine to five in a very successful career and moved it over into working for yourself because you saw the need was there. And so listeners, like maybe you're in a professional career. One, you need to listen to this because you're gonna be able to learn how to make more money. But if you are feeling an urge, like Sophie did it, she made the move. And for anyone who's listening that you're like, yeah, but I'm, I'm not in a company, I work for myself. Well, also listen up because we're gonna not just talk about um, making more money in a company, but how to negotiate better. And also by staying firm in, your fee, whatever that, whatever your fee may be. So let's dive in. How significant do you see the gender pay gap? Yeah, it is honestly quite significant and long lasting. It's been here for a long time. There's a big range in terms of what identities you look at. So if you look at Canada, for example, across the board, it's about a 16% pay gap, so around 84 cents. 
But then it starts to grow when you look at women who immigrated to Canada as children or immigrated to Canada as adults. The gap gets even more significant. Indigenous women or women of different uh, ethnicities and backgrounds. So once there's intersecting identities on top of that, it gets way bigger as well. So it and it's been around for a long time. There hasn't been a ton of change. So it's something we're super passionate about in trying to close that gap. Yeah. And you are wanting to, you I'm and correct me if I'm wrong, you're working with both the company and the employee in different ways. Can you share a little bit more about that? Exactly. Yeah. So the two main things we do is first, we coach women specifically in negotiating for the compensation they deserve. So at key points in their career. So that could be anything. It could be promotions, performance reviews, new job opportunities, or just sometimes when someone wants to meaningfully talk about compensation with their manager, then we do also support self-employed women on setting their rates and sticking to them because that can be a challenge too. And then the other piece of what we offer is we coach employers on building more inclusive workplaces for women. So that can be implementing and maintaining successful employee resource groups and helping them navigate the organizational structure of those groups and also creating mentorship and sponsorship programs, especially to bring women into those senior positions. Because in a lot of the companies we work with, the junior levels are more equitable and we see more representation and then it does tend to taper off as you move up. Yeah, I've been actually invited to come and speak into many male dominated industries and they're wanting women's empowerment. They want their women to put their hand up and say like, yes, I want that role or I want to move into management uh, or I want to get paid more. <laughs> they're, they're just finding that the women aren't putting their hand up and it's this whole like, oh, who me? I I know I don't think I have enough qualifications for that role. And then someone else, we'll just say someone else. We won't say the gender. Just someone else comes and 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 takes that position, but maybe has less qualifications. So I'm just curious, like, what have you seen for women not putting their hands up to move up in these promotions? And then we'll get into negotiating negotiating. Yeah, I think that is such a common challenge. I mean, I've heard different versions of this statistic, but just the concept that men tend to put their hands up sooner when they don't necessarily have every single one of the qualifications. And then women do tend a little bit more to wait until they've ticked every single box. And I see that play out in so many different ways, whether it's putting a hand up for a promotion or waiting to negotiate until you've ticked all of those different boxes in order to get to that level and feel that you've proved your worthiness and so I always think at the very least communicate that that's where you'd like to be so even if you're not getting that promotion tomorrow at least your leader knows that's where you want to move towards Mm -hmm. can they see any gaps they know what your aspirations are so it's not because I think so many of us assume that people know what our aspirations are but we're not communicating them and maybe they don't know yeah so you could get passed over because they just didn't think you were interested but I, I see it and you made a really good point here. It's saying you want it bef- even before you're ready so that there is permission to be mentored and for those gaps to be to be shared with you so that you can get maybe extra training or mentoring or different roles and responsibilities in order to step into that next place. So listeners, I hope you picked up on that because that's huge. You need to be asking now. You need to be sharing now. Uh, And I think you'd have more confidence to do that now when you're like, oh, whatever, I'm so new. I know I don't know those things. It's kind of less pressure. So we talked a little bit, or we mentioned negotiating. And I'm guessing a lot of women don't choose to negotiate. So what do you think the common reasons are? Yeah, I think there's a lot of ones that come up often when we work with our clients actually leaning on what we were just talking about a common one is I wanted to get in the role first and prove my worthiness but just remembering that you know if you have interviewed for this position you've met with a bunch of different people you've provided a resume you have all of the qualifications you already have proved your worthiness so you're in a great position to negotiate you don't need to wait until you get into the role and six months or 12 months down the road. So I think that's a really common one. Mm. I think 
I also hear a lot, I assumed something wasn't negotiable. And there definitely are times when things aren't negotiable, especially in unionized environments or really large companies with a lot of structure. And honestly, often that's great because it means they probably have more equitable pay practices. But that being said, you can always ask the question, is this negotiable? That's always appropriate. And even if you find that it's not, then maybe you can't negotiate base salary, but you can negotiate your vacation or a phone allowance or a fitness allowance, whatever it is. There's typically something within there that you can negotiate. A fitness allowance? I've never heard of that. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's something we're really excited about is thinking about compensation holistically. So yeah. everyone's going to have different priorities within that. But we often think about vacation and base salary when we think about negotiating because it's what yeah. we see day to day. But there's so many different other elements and lots of employers now are implementing health spending accounts or fitness allowances to make sure that people are getting what they need to, you know, have lives that that you know, fit their personal and professional aspirations. So fitness allowances are more and more common. And if you're paying for a gym membership anyway, and there's an opportunity to get that covered, that's great. Yeah. And I guess also you, you mentioned mentoring. There might also be some coaching that could come in to be able to have a business coach or a life coach or a senior management coach or whatever kind of you're in. Um, as well as maybe working from home or flexibility on that, continuing education budget for additional trainings um, or attending conferences. Like we met through W North, maybe a membership to one of these places or going to conferences would be a benefit as well. I totally agree. And I think there's no better story either because you're asking for coverage on something that's gonna make you perform better in your role grow more quickly into your future aspirations that benefits you and your leader and your employer. So I think that's such a wonderful thing to negotiate for. Yeah. And so it starts with the simple question, is this negotiable? Yeah, exactly. Creative. And I do that sometimes in speaking. Uh, maybe they don't have a budget beyond what they're telling me. Uh, but they do have probably a continuing education budget. Maybe they can give me a table at the event to sell my my books. Maybe they can put a, a signing session, autograph session on the agenda. Maybe I can get a copy of the video. So there's always additional things. So I'm glad you said about this, this fitness, uh, the fitness piece in there, because there are ways to think outside of the box, but you definitely need to be talking to someone in the industry who's an expert at doing this. So you got some tricks up your sleeve. I like it. Uh, but what are some mistakes, some common mistakes that you see in people when they do go to negotiate? So maybe they say, yeah, I'm going to do it. I, I, I'm going to do it. And, and then they mess up. What do you see happening? I know it's such a challenging one because you can, I love once people are excited and they're going to go in and negotiate, but sometimes we do see the same sort of common mistakes when you hear from clients and their past experiences with negotiating, one of the most common ones that I think is really timely right now is over-focusing on external factors. So we hear from so many people, I asked for a raise of, let's call it $5,000 because inflation was so high last year. And that's great. It's very true, but it's true of everyone in the role company and industry. So it's not very persuasive because it's not centered around what you're delivering. And so it's really easy for an employer and very true is well, then we have to make that correction for everyone. So focusing instead on what you're bringing is much more persuasive. Yeah. Are there other mistakes that happen? Yeah. I think another one that comes up is saying too much. And I kind of think is this is a two part answer one in that we do a lot at work. So it's easy to say, if you are centering around what you're bringing to the table, that's wonderful, but it's easy to say, I worked on this project and with this client and this happened and that, and it becomes this really long speech. And then your ask is really little at the end and it's almost distracting. So keeping it more clear and concise and focused. So picking things that are really relevant to the conversation that are gonna resonate with the person you're speaking to and are relevant to your specific ask keeping that all clear and concise is much more persuasive and more impactful because lots of us are visual learners and you kind of get lost in too much information. 
And then thinking about how it can also impact is saying too much can also happen where you almost talk yourself out of the negotiation in the meeting. So you go in and you say, I'd like a raise of X, but it's okay if it's not, maybe I'd also take more vacation and you can have some time to think about it. And it's so easy to keep talking because silence is so awkward, but using silence is so effective. So just say your ask and then stop talking and wait for the other person to respond. Yeah. Count to 60. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah don't say anything don't say anything yeah so I'm hearing be be concise you got to do your homework before this you got to really prep and it's looking at that roles and responsibilities and then what KPIs key performance indicators are you are you connecting to and then just like in b to b to like in the entrepreneurial world you're always thinking what is my client like what's in it for them And so I'm hearing that as well as like, don't just talk about how amazing you are, but like, what does it mean to the employer? So there's, there's work that goes into this negotiation, but it'll pay off if you do it right. Yeah. The return on investment is so high. And I think so often we work so hard for other people. We work hard for our employers and we don't always work so hard for ourselves. And there aren't that many opportunities to so directly impact your long-term wealth as there is in a negotiation. And Mm. we heard a stat, this is a little bit of an older stat now, it's a couple years older. So I think it could be even greater, but early in your career, even negotiating for a raise of a thousand dollars on your starting salary can mean uh, not negotiating for that can mean a loss of 500,000 over your full career, because compensation is typically a percentage raise. So thinking about 5% or 10% or whatever it is. And then that compounding wealth as well. So it's really meaningful and it can be so easy to say, you know, I'm not going to ask for a thousand dollars. What is that? But it does add up. Yeah. And I'm also imagining there's a different level of, of perspective of you as an employee. Whoa, they negotiated this. So then when you come up to that one year review or the next position, they're going to know that you're going to come in negotiating. So they're maybe going to bring their best offer or be, be willing to move because they know that you're someone who will, will put, you know, forward their desires and their needs. So they'll want to retain in that. Exactly. And negotiation is such a key tool for most leaders and professionals as well. We negotiate so often at work, you know, with our clients for projects, for resourcing. If you're a good negotiator, you'll be better at work as well. Mm. And really when you're getting the job, if you already have the job and they want you, you got nothing to lose. That's the time where you're like, well, actually I'm taking a vacation before I start. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, exactly. Like they want you. So that's a, that's a really good position to be in. It's almost like the dating stage with someone and everyone's put their best foot forward. Um, yeah. Awesome. And then, so retention, I I mentioned the word retention and retention is a a problem, uh, and really costly for, for companies. So what can employers do to retain and engage more women in their workplaces? Cause we also don't want to lose women. We lost a lot of women due to COVID out of the workplace. We lose women out of the workplace due to childbearing, right? So what can they do to keep us there longer? Yeah, and I think you touched on the COVID and and parental challenges is a big one. Like even in between February 2020 and November 2020, over 20,000 people left the Canadian workforce. And of those, it was about 67% were mothers with children under the age of six. So really stressing that is a group that needs more focus if we're thinking about great top talent that needs to be retained. And I think in terms of what employers can do, I think the first step is always asking the question and being open to hearing feedback. So whether that's creating an employee resource group that's going to look at opportunities for positive change, you're starting the conversation and hearing from the people with those lived experiences versus assuming assuming what they might need. And then I think there's some really easy changes that can be made, being open to flexible working arrangements to cert, to suit certain employees' needs. Everyone feels more retained. It's not just women. Everyone feels more engaged when they have the power and the autonomy to work where they're most productive. 
And I think there's lots of opportunities from just having that open dialogue and building that sense of community. And I think being open that it's a journey. I think so many employers are scared to do anything because they feel that they have such a long way to go. And as soon as they start doing something, they'll feel that they're not meeting these milestones. But I think being open, this is something we're working towards. These are a couple actions we're taking today. We know this isn't the full list yet, but we're going to keep working on it. And then we're open to feedback as well. So anyone who might be feeling that they're at risk of retention because they're not feeling included or empowered to be most successful at work, they're being invited to share that feedback. So there's an opportunity to retain those individuals versus they feel that they can't raise their hand and they just move on without sharing that. Yeah, yeah, that's so important. Retention is key for for my virtual assistant team. We actually have built in a retention strategy from the job application stage. Even from then, we have it set for that. And for me, I I love the long term relationship I can build with people in the workplace. And so it, it's just smart for employers to do these things. But like you said, it it could seem like they're so far off that they're not going to be able to. But as as someone in a work, when I was in a workplace, even just knowing they're making a step or or that they're engaging with someone like you and your and your team in order to know where the faults lie and to know what's possible and to see that first step, right? Even if it's just like, we're gonna allow you on, on Fridays to leave early and to work from home if you'd like. Like that's, I used to love that when that happened. Um, so that's great that you're, you're really helping both sides to win, which is important. Exactly. Really hoping to make that positive change on all ends. And I think um, a lot of employers are in a spot too now where I feel like they're asking those important questions that they maybe weren't asking five or 10 years ago. And so I think we are at a point where a lot of employers are, are keen to make those steps. Yeah. Now, negotiations only happen if women are moving up a lot of times, or you're in the same role, but you're having a review. But how do we get women into these senior positions? Because there's no one to mentor if there's no one in the senior position. So how do we how do we get more women up? Yeah, I love that. And I think so often we talk about the glass ceiling of preventing women from reaching those high senior positions. But there is a report, Women in the Workplace, that comes out annually by McKinsey and Lean In, and they they just released their 2023 one last month. And what they cited, they feel that the glass ceiling is very real, but the more higher priority item to focus on is they were calling it the broken rung. And so finding that at that middle manager position, that was really where they saw the most pronounced drop off in women reaching those positions and and finding that 60% of those positions were held by men and only 40% by women. And then there's sort of this snowballing effect at every subsequent level where there's less and less women available to be considered. So the pool is just getting smaller and smaller. So really trying to focus on, I think that mentorship and sponsorship of the junior and intermediate women to make sure they see career opportunities for themselves in the future, they have the right support. And, you know, the reality is we're all biased it's not just some people are and some people aren't and so the only challenge is if there's uniformity so say it's majority men and you'd have the same challenge if it was majority women we're all sort of tempted to see future potential in those who are like us and then just evaluate baseline capability in those who are dissimilar so if I was on a team of all women and we had two candidates and one was a man and one was a woman we might subconsciously evaluate that woman higher, even if their qualifications were identical, because we could all project her into our own roles in the future. Wow. And I guess that's not even just with gender, but it's with age, culture, uh, personality type, like so many different things. So yeah, that's where having you guys come in would be really important to have that unbiased Uh, perspective of the company and what's happening and then to get the truth out of those actually living the experience. 
Exactly. And we hear so much from people around the concept of hiring a culture fit. But when we have a culture fit, it's very much this is our culture and we're trying to bring in someone who's the same. And so now we have a bunch of people with similar genders, racial identity, same hobbies, whatever it is. But I really like the move towards a culture ad. Like, who are we missing? What perspective do we not have yet? And who could bring, you know, disrupt that group thing, make us more innovative. So I love the term culture ad. I like that too. I think that's also a very positive way to look at it rather than, um, you know, who do we need to bring in here to be diversity, you know, inclusive and, 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 and culturally appropriate and unbiased and all that crap. Instead to look and go, what can we add? What will add to this rather than what do we need to check a box off in order to be compliant or to look good in society's view of our company? Really good point. Really good point. So we've kind of gone through the the negotiations and how to move up and the mistakes people can make. But what about our self-employed women that are listening? Any specific <laughs> tips? Because I know they can pull some tips from it, but anything specific for them? Yeah, we we work a lot with self-employed women. And I think common challenges, I mean, sticking to your rate is really common for the same reasons it can be hard to negotiate. And I think a common tip is if you're in a service-based industry is limiting the number of rates that you provide. Often when we work with clients, they might have a rate for these three different types sized companies and then for this industry and for that industry. And while it's great to be tailored, once that list gets too long, it's a little bit more ambiguous personally to stick to those rates because there's so many different ones. So picking sort of key, maybe three rates mm -hmm. and grouping people into those that and it's a lot easier to stick to that once it's very defined no I can't offer you that rate because you fit into this category versus there's a lot that you sort of fit into yeah because it needs to be a business decision not an emotional decision and not a lack of confidence decision and so by having those different categories or groupings or price structure they can refer to that rather than going in their mind and going, well, what feels right here? Exactly. It's, I just, which category do you fit in? Yeah. And it's not this emotional decision every single time. Hmm. Yes. Because that can get tiring. That decision. Very tiring. And also having to really stand in your rate every single time and to almost in your own mind go, am I still worth this? Am I worth this today? Because today I made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I I don't go into the bank and and tell them what the rate will be. Like the rate is the rate of what it is. Okay, awesome. So I know that um I always ask my guests to, you know, to so bring some cool resources, some free gifts. So where can people find out more information and more resources in order to work through some of these pieces? Yeah, absolutely. So on our website at thethoughtfulco.net, so we have a bunch of free re resources available. So articles and explainers, a lot that go into tactics for negotiating, advocating for yourself at work. Um, we also have one recently on five common compensation mistakes that I'm sure lots of folks would want to read. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, exactly. And then we also wanted to offer 15% off our products and services to listeners. So using the code dynamic women X T T C. And so that can be used for products on our website. So those include our salary negotiation script that helps you actually craft that script for negotiation, which is very helpful. Um, and then we also offer one on one coaching sessions. So 45 minute sessions where we go through all the different elements of your compensation package mm -hmm. and then help you build that ask so that you're ready to go into that conversation with your leader. And then we also offer a session for rate setting for self-employed women as well. So helping to define the rate from a market perspective, also understanding what you want to get paid. We don't always ask ourselves that question and then sticking to your rates. As we said, it's really important. Yeah. And so the piece about what do you want to get paid 
rather than what do you think people will pay you or what do you think it's worth or what are other people charging? It's like, what do you want to earn this year? And then therefore, what do you need to charge? But that that is a process and there's so many nuances. So I'm glad that you're offering that ability for people to work one-on-one with you to be able to do that. Like resources are wonderful online and I'm glad that, that there's lots of free resources and people can kind of start with that, but then they can book that session and then actually work through the different things. Scripts are amazing too. I love scripts. One of my first scripts that I that I got from another coach helped me to to get 15 new clients after doing 32 sample sessions, but it was the script. It was a little bit of me, but it was a lot of the script. So I'm glad that you're offering that. So all of the information from this will be in the notes for this so that you can uh, click through to the website and you can see the codes and you can see all the information. Just please note this offer, these offers are only good until January 31st. First, 2024. Okay. So make sure that you're knowing that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. What are your, what are your final thoughts to, to those that are joining us? I think sharing, I know we've touched on this a little bit already, but just always asking the question, putting your hand up. It's so easy to wait and wait to negotiate, but if you wait six or 12 months and then by the time you're going in to ask the question, you're really frustrated, you're not really set up for productive conversation. And then there's a lot of time sensitivity. Maybe you're feeling if you don't get that asked today, then you're going to leave. So you want to always ask early as you start thinking about it. And at the very least, you're just sharing this is where I'd like to be. How can we move towards this in the future? Or this is the promotion that I'd like. I'd like to be at this level next year. How do we get towards it? I think always putting your hand up and sharing that is so important. And when you said, how do we get towards that? That may give me the image of linking arms with the boss or the supervisor or whoever, the HR department, whoever it is, to come up with a plan to make that happen rather than just hoping and praying on the day that the job posting for the new position goes up, that they're going to take your resume and hire you right away. So I, I love that. It's so true. I feel like we so often think about it as yes or no, but even if it's a no, there's a way to move forward positively and say, well, how do we get there in the future? Are there gaps? Is there budget budget constraints? Help me understand your perspective. And then let's, work together very positively to make sure we're both or both our needs are met. I, I want to like transcribe each of these sentences. <laughs> if, if I was doing going to do any of this, I would definitely be transcribing these sentences. They're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. Thank you. All of the, all of the information, you're an amazing resource for this. I'm so glad that you said yes to that, that blog and that you followed your passion and really you're, you're serving women in a place that they that they struggle and that society is really holding us back. So thank you for kind of being a, a leader for women in this because there's we know we have a far way to go to get uh, pay equity, gender equity. And so thank you for the work that you're doing, you and your company, Jillian. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, Diane. This was so much fun. Yay. Okay, so for all of you listening, what do you think? What are your comments? Please write us. You can always do a review. And if you do, please take a screenshot of the review. Send it over to team at dianerolson.com with your mailing address so we can send you a little something special in the mail. And we always have every other episode or every once in a while, we'll have amazing dynamic women like Sophie. So please be thinking about like, who do I want to have come on? Diane, this is a guest that I want. Feel free to reach out to me, Diane at dianerolson.com and hit subscribe and share this episode with one of your favorite professional women or women that need to hold their rates so that they can learn from Sophie and all the amazing information that came here today. Until next time, everyone, stay dynamic. Bye.